I want to know. Can Ben Shapiro resolve the Israeli-Palestine conflict? Can, can Ben Shapiro navigate us to a two-state solution? Okay? I, you know, my, my guess is no. Fr frankly, I'm going to be upfront about this. But, you know, he uploaded a video uh, three days ago where he interviewed the former ambassador uh, to Israel, uh, David Friedman. And uh, let's see if together they can pilot us to peace. They, they, they won't, uh, obviously. But Ben Shapiro has written about how Arabs live in trash and bomb shit. I, I don't I don't think he's going to get us there. But, you know. Hope springs eternal. Online is Ambassador David Friedman. He was the U.S. ambassador to Israel from March 2017 until January 2021 under Donald Trump. And he, of course, successfully guided unprecedented diplomatic achievements in the U.S. Israel relationship, including the Abraham Accords and the United States embassy being moved to Jerusalem. He has a brand new book out today titled One Jewish State, The Last Best Hope to Resolve. Oh, Well, you know, hope, sp hope sprang eternal for all of 21 seconds. <laughs> of course. Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Ambassador Friedman, great to speak with you. Thanks, Ben. Great to be with you as well. So obviously, let's start with the new... Gen genuinely, though, I am fascinated about how, how do conservative Zionists, like, expect to resolve this, right? Because one of the issues that we are facing when it comes to Israel and Palestine, right? You either are you either want a one state solution or you want a two state solution, okay? Two states meaning uh Israel has a state, the Palestinians have a state. They're separate, they manage their own affairs separately. That's it, okay? And the on the other hand, you have a one state solution where uh, effectively, Israel annexes uh, all of the occupied territories and gives equal rights uh, and equal protections under the law to everyone living in those places. But I, there, there's a problem with that, and that is that there are too many Palestinians for Israel to be comfortable doing that, because if they ha had to enfranchise the number of Palestinians that currently exist in the occupied territories, um, it would change what many Israeli politicians call the uh, fundamental Jewish nature of the country, i.e. too many Palestinians would be able to vote and too many Palestinians would be able to get into positions of political power, and that would present an issue for a one state solution. So I'm curious how Ben and uh, his guest are going to navigate this issue because, well, it seems pretty obvious that the solution, the final solution of the uh, Israeli state is to gun for a one state solution where they simply kill or displace enough Palestinians to maintain a, uh, well, and, uh, you know, an ethno state. As a former conservative Zionist, the long game is to revoke the special refugee status of Palestinians, which is in perpetuity as opposed to the children, and then drive the Palestinians out through increasingly draconian measures and wait out the refugee status. Yeah. I mean, let's let's see if that aligns with uh, what is put out here. News of the of the weekend. Yeah, no, like, like the, the the solution that is currently being pursued by the state of Israel is effectively a one state solution fueled by ethnic cleansing and, uh, you know, genocidal acts of violence. Horrifying news out of Israel as six bodies are found in a terror tunnel held by Hamas, six hostages for over 300 days. 
in the back of the head, including an Israeli American. And the first response, apparently, of the rest of the world is to tell Israel to make more concessions to Hamas. That includes the current president of the United States, Joe Biden, who awakened from his torpor in Rehoboth Beach to explain that Benjamin Netanyahu was apparently not doing enough. What's your take on the situation? Now, uh, to be clear, the reason why uh, and Ben is choosing his words very carefully here because he's saying the rest of the world. People in Israel, the Israeli people are so frustrated with Netanyahu and the Israeli media, like both left, center and right, blame Netanyahu for this because Netanyahu is pretty nakedly. Uh, changing negotiation goals. One of the key negotiation goals that Netanyahu has recently adopted, something that is completely new, is that he wants to have the IDF control the uh, Southern Crossing, the the crossing, uh, I, the Philadelphia Crossing, um, that is between Gaza and Egypt, meaning he wants the IDF to effectively encircle all of Gaza <laughs> and uh, have troops stationed in Egypt controlling the border crossing, which is insane. No country would accept that. Like, they, this is like Mexico saying, we want to have full control over the, uh, you know, U.S. border crossing. No U.S. troops can, can control uh, their border. Like, no, that's a non-starter. That's a non-starter for any country in the world. And Egypt is nothing to like sniff at. Like they're, they're a military dictatorship. The military is basically all they got going on for them right now. And, um, well, uh, Netanyahu knows that's a non-starter with any country. And so, it's pretty nakedly obvious to even the most rabid Zionist Israelis that, well, I mean, the most Zionist Israelis are a fan of this because they want to continue the war. Uh, but it's obvious to most Israelis that Netanyahu is doing this disingenuously to purposely sabotage the negotiations. But Ben Shapiro is just like, ah, oh, well, <laughs> people are just mean to Netanyahu. They're mean because, you know, he's killing tens of thousands of people in order to uh, do one of the largest ethnic cleansings uh, in modern memory. I was horrified by that. And I'll tell you why, you know, um, you know, Israel's going through a massive trauma since October 7th. And that trauma was, you know, was relived again a couple of days ago when these six hostages were found dead. And look, they, they, there are political divides in Israel and, and everybody knows that. Uh, but for for Biden to say uh, on a day like yesterday or, or two days ago, whenever he said it, that Bibi Netanyahu is not doing enough to free the hostages, uh, not only is it absolutely false, uh, but it, it, it pours gasoline on, on a fire of, uh, of, of America's most important ally. I mean, the, the people of Israel need some comfort. They need a hug. They don't need, don't need to be told that their democratically elected leader doesn't care about the hostages, which is an absolute lie, an absolute lie. And, and you, know what the, you know what the proof of it is? Because you know this as well. You know, in, in, uh, in, unfortunately, in Israel and in America, you know, uh, these things, you know, fa everything leaks constantly. I mean, any story out is, is out in about, the, you know, five, ten minutes. So, so here's the story that no one ever wrote. What was the deal, right? What was the deal? How many hostages were being released and when? Uh, what was the price? I, I believe that the deal, as outlined by Joe Biden in July, was effectively a, an ongoing ceasefire contingent on, uh, you know, scheduled releases of hostages and uh, a rebuilding of Gaza, Gazan infrastructure and uh, a path forward to make sure that, like, violence between uh, these areas cease. Essentially, I, I've done videos on it before. You, like, you can definitely find videos on my channel going more in depth into these deals. But, like, that, that was really the, the body of it.
you know? The main sticking point for a long time was um, Hamas saying, well, we want uh, a full commitment to, like, withdraw troops from Gaza. And, like... This was three days ago, right? And the, you know, this, this is, you know, news coming out of... This is news coming out of, you know, the, the occupied territories right now. But um, if, if six Israelis being killed is a national tragedy, and to be clear, it is bad. For that to happen. It's bad for innocent people to be executed. But we have innocent people dying, not just in Gaza now, but also in the West Bank by state-sanctioned militia groups that operate as settler colonial forces in the occupied West Bank. And in these clashes, they are you know, brutally killing children and women and the elderly. They are rounding them up and putting them into uh, camps. It is uh, brutal. It is doing incalculable amounts of damage. And this is in an area, by the way, the West Bank is not controlled by Hamas. How many murderers were being released? What was happening to Sinwar? What was happening to Mashal? What was happening to Gaza? Who was going to rule over it? Was Israel getting out or, you know, you know, permanently getting out temporarily? What was? Uh, center spiral. Why is Israel an important ally? Well, number one, it's not because of fucking organ harvesting. All right. Like, that's not that's not why they're an important ally. Don't you don't need to you don't need to, like, play into or rely again this is what i've been talking about for like months now you don't need to like go into like anti-semitic conspiracy nonsense all you can do like like all you have to do is look at u.s geopolitical like interests and there are several very key axes for those number one the united states opposes iran iran has uh, significant military apparatus. It has, um, you know, it, it's basically a gigantic fortress in the region that would be an immense undertaking to try and invade or topple or do anything to, really. And, you know, now they're probably getting close to having nuclear weapons. So, like, it is in, you know, in, in the minds of, like, uh, the military establishment of the United States, like, you want to have a you want to have key allies in the region who are ready to help you oppose that should it start uh you know should should it as a nation state entity start expanding outward and so that's that's number 1 number 2 uh you want it as a strategic point to uh use soft and hard both soft and hard power in order to uh, protect uh, international trade, uh, same reason like the United States invests crazy amounts of money and military support to Egypt because we want to have preferential treatment when it comes to the Suez Canal. There's a lot of stuff like that. You want to make sure international trade can flow, especially when you are the preeminent superpower on the planet. There, there are a lot of reasons... Um, there are a lot of reasons that the United States wants Israel as a, as a strategic military ally. Um, and for a long time, it was also a good P like a, an ally useful for PR, you know, like there's a lot of reasons that it makes sense from a cynical geopolitical standpoint. Um, it's just not, it just isn't a good policy to pursue, even with the geopolitical benefits. Like we we could we could get similar benefits from other nations in the region. 
Um, but that would require time, effort, and a lot of logistical, like, fina fina finagling. There we go. Now, Center Spiral. It is true that in the past, the Israeli government had human experimentation and illegal organ harvesting. However, you are alleging that it was, that like, that is a, an important enough aspect of their economy or like ge like geopolitical positioning that that is why the United States is supporting them. Essentially, you're trying to say that Israel is doing a global conspiracy of organ harvesting in order and that's why we support them. Like that's that's the insane part, right? Like the the insane part is you're taking like a kernel of truth where like there were Israeli like military or and like medical uh, things that went on. Oh, oh, okay. Thank you for wasting all of our time with your sarcasm. Cool. That. Thank you. Thank you for fighting chat and being. I I love that. Thank you. I have limited time. Cool. Let's go. The answer is no one knows because there was no deal. And the idea of accusing Netanyahu at a time when he's- It sounds terrible because it is. I've literally talked about this on stream before. J Jesus. Jesus. I've talked about it. Stop. Stop being a- Central Spiral. When you are saying, when you are coming into my chat and you're saying that- Oh, the United States is supporting Israel because they're harvesting human organs from Palestinians. Yeah, you're doing the anti-Semitic thing. You're doing the anti-Semitic conspiracy bullshit. And I have an extraordinarily low tolerance for that shit. I'm not Jimmy Dore. I'm not someone who's going to put that out there. That's not my jam. I tell you things that are true. And the true thing is, hey, in the 90s, Israel had like an unethical like organ harvesting program. That's absolutely true. But it's not the center point of our global like geopolitical interest in the country because that would imply that there is a global I don't know, cabal of Jews who are trying to I don't know, control the world's organ supply. And that plays right into, the, that is right at home with like Alex Jones shit. If you're, if your satire, if your sarcasm is just doing anti-Semitism, you have failed spectacularly. Moving on. Fighting for his life, for the life of the country, is uh, is the worst political stunt, the most the most obnoxious political stunt I've ever seen anybody pull, and uh, and they should be ashamed of what they did. You know, Ambassador Friedman. You know, for for those Americans who look at the conflict in the Middle East and they say, why why does this even matter to us? Why is this something that actually we should care about? Why isn't this just a faraway conflict in a distant land? I, I think what what. This speaks to the, the reaction of the Biden administration or, say, the U.K. government, which is cutting off weapons to Israel in the middle of a war. It speaks to a, a, a new kind of Western idea since the end of the Cold War that the West does not deserve to defend itself, that when something terrible happens to the West, it probably is because the West has been too harsh. It's because the West itself has brought. You know, like, I, I love this. I love this from Ben Shapiro, who's like number one, like thing is American exceptionalism, right? Ben Shapiro pushes American exceptionalism in like all of his content. He loves to talk about how like America is this super special place full of super special like good boys and the West really made all of culture and really has has led the world for, you know, centuries now. And um, 
But how could the West be so harsh? How the but but how could how could people being mad be the West's fault? Oh, oh, but sure, we're with a preeminent superpower on the planet. But but how could people be mad at us? We're just we're just we're just little guys. Just a little birthday boy. Poor little guy. Just, like, that's the thing, right? Like, you can't have it both ways. If you're a global superpower, you have an effect on other people on the planet. If, you, if your country is a global superpower, it interacts with 10 billion things every day. And you cannot divorce that cause from that effect. And if the effect is perpetuating a colonial state and colonial violence, which is exactly what is happening in Israel, then yeah, you're going to have the people on the receiving end of that violence be pretty not happy about it. Brought it upon itself. It's all, it's all backlash. Why should what's going on in Israel matter to people who don't live in the region? Well, in the first place, it's it's disrupted everybody's lives. I mean, look at look look at the um, look at how those who hate our country have mobilized uh, upon this um, this war to foment uh, you know insurrection everywhere. I mean, you can't go to college in America anymore in in the blue states. You just can't go. I mean, you know, I have friends whose kids you know they're paying lots of money for tuition. They can't go to class. Because this war has has mobilized a current within the United States that is Marxist, communist, anti-American, and wants to destroy us. And and, and yeah, uh, you know, uh, college kids who you know want tens of thousands of Palestinians to stop being slaughtered. They're they're really they they're really out to destroy America. I, I, honestly, like if that is your worldview. That says so much more about American hegemony than anything else. You know, like you you think that protests against genocide are a threat to America. What does that say about how you view the world? What does that say about what you think America stands for? Insanity. 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 And those that want to destroy Israel want to destroy America. And Israel is the tip of the spear. And, and as goes Israel, ultimately, that's, that's, that's the Western world. I mean, that's the tip of the Western world. They're fighting the front closest to our enemies. And so um, uh, it, there's a direct line between how Israel does and prosecutes this war and defends itself and how the rest of the, the Western world. I mean, look, you see, London is, is unlivable. Paris is unlivable. Why? Uh, what? This went in a weird direction. L London? You, you mean uh, uh, the city that's responsible for like 90% of the UK's GDP? Look. You. I. I'm broken. Uh, th this man has broke. Yeah, chat. Look, look, look upon all of this destruction in London. It, uh, it sickens me. It's it sickens me. The song London Bridges. I just found out that song is about current events. And the bridges, they're falling down. Because the, the, the these countries have followed your exactly what you pointed out, that that was somehow we, we need to commit national suicide as a way of, of self-governance. And Can you elaborate? Like, I, I gen genuinely. You, you're saying London is committing self-suicide. And Paris is unlivable. Based on what? Because my assumption, 
and maybe I'm wrong uh, without any kind of like, you know, without any kind of follow up from him or elaboration from him with such an insane claim. I'm kind of assuming that he's saying that London and Paris are dying because there are more black and brown people going there. You know, pe people from former colonial holdings are making their way to the colonial core and living there. And he thinks that that is a destruction of those places. You know, like that's, that seems to be essentially his argument. I, it is, but I want him to be more specific about it. You know, like I want, you, you know, like if Ben Shapiro wasn't just completely on board with this insane rhetoric, like even if he was only like 95% on board, you would expect him to follow this up by like a, with, with like a solid, what? What, what do you, what do you mean by that? You know, like if if Ben Shapiro wasn't in lockstep with this racist asshole, let's you know what? Maybe I'm jumping to conclusions. You know, hope springs eternal. As I said, I coined that at the beginning of this segment. Let's see. Let's see where it goes. We can't do that. We're, we're, we're you know, we're 10 years behind London, you know, on this. You know, we can't do it. And, and Israel can't do it. And, um, um, and and I would add one thing, Ben, which is that, um, you know, the Bible still sells uh, 2000 copies an hour. In America, 20 million copies a year. People care about the Bible. It's the, it's the last authentic, you know, anchoring wisdom and values that we have left in our country. And we're losing that as well. But that's all we got left is the Bible or the values, the Judeo-Christian values of, of that book. What? What are you waffling about, man? All we have left is the book. Are are you familiar with like church schisms, my guy? Are you are you, are you familiar at all with like the history of Europe from like you know the fall of the Roman Empire until today? Because uh, like okay, so center spiral. I wanna I want to genuinely ask you, what is your goal here? Right now, I'm offended you called me a racist and a little upset you pretended it ended in the 90s. I think that when you are claiming that there is a global organ harvesting ring centered in Israel, and that's the reason and the only reason the United States would be interested in allying with that country, you are, by definition, insinuating the existence of a Jewish cabal that is coordinating organ harvesting and, and trafficking around the world. Is that, is that not what you're insinuating? Like what, when you, when you say the United States is only allied with Israel because they're harvesting the organs, how is that different than just saying blood libel how 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 does that differentiate you from someone who's saying oh they're just harvesting the adrenochrome from the children Like, like genuinely. Uh, adrenochrome isn't actually made up. Fun, fun fact for you. 
it's a it's a real it's a real chemical. So, um, wow. You know what? Uh, are are the Jews trafficking in adrenochrome too? Are they harvesting adrenochrome and trafficking that around the world to keep uh, the global elites young? Well, you know, you know what else is uh, is pretty useful to harvest? Blood. Are the are the Jews uh, harvesting blood? as well to, to sell around the world? Is that, are, are we supporting Israel because um, they're just harvesting all of the blood that the global elites are then drinking to keep themselves young or something? Uh, you know, using some kind of uh, magic ritual? Well, Center Spiral, fun fact for you. If you want to be anti-colonial, it really helps to not play into fucking thousand-year-old anti-Semitic tropes. You, you know, like, it, I'm literally doing a segment about the colonialism, and you're coming in here and posting in my on-screen chat about blood libel and how you think they're actually doing blood libel. You, you're, you're like unironically doing the thousand-year-old anti-Semitic trope, one of the oldest in existence. So if you are truly an anti-colonial ally, that's not, that's not my conception, okay? That is factual. That is textual. I studied it as part of my minor in history because I have a degree in that. And now, fun fact for you, you are just drawing on that. And so when you are doing that, do you think, do, do you think, question, for you to genuinely consider. Do you think it furthers anti-colonial sentiment to use anti-Semitic tropes or does it hinder it? Does it harm it? Have we come, ha has this segment gone better because you decided to invoke blood libel? Are you about to start posting about how Hitler had a point? How, there, how he understood correctly that there was a cabal of Jews trafficking in the blood of German children. Are, are you about to do that? Because do you think that would further the anti-colonial movement? You can't separate criticisms of Israel with criticisms of Jewish people. You're disgusting. You, you realize that, right? You criticize systems. You don't, you don't criticize individuals, okay? The system here that we're criticizing is a nation state. And that nation state arises out of very specific material conditions. And what you're doing is just saying, well, Jewishness has, a, has, a, has this, uh, I don't know, certain ineffable quality to it. This ineffable Jewish quality that leads it to being uh, blood libel. And that's insane. That's insane. You, oh, you, you can. You, you can. Oh, I'm sorry. I can't separate Jewish uh, Jewish culture and uh, and the Jewish state. I have to tell you, I don't think about Jewish people when I criticize Israel, 
you can't see anything else. My 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 guy. My guy. Uh I'm the one trying to tell you that if your activism is drawing on these tropes, it's deeply flawed. And I'm trying to tell you also that I think that there should be a full invest. God. They are colonial power. Yeah. I fucking do a show on it. Why are you arguing with me on this? Oh, my point, my fucking point was that if you are going to try and oppose their colonialism, doing so by invoking blood libel is not it, fam. That's not the way to do it. Like... I think that Israel should be investigated for war crimes. But you know what the funny thing is with the thing you linked? It's not proof that Israel is harvesting organs, is it? It's a call to investigate that, which I am fine with. I want Israel to be investigated for war crimes. But what I'm not fine with is when someone comes into my chat and alleges that there is a global organ harvesting ring with no fucking evidence whatsoever, and then doubles and triples and quadruples down on it, and when I say, hey, let's not do blood libel, you just don't get it. You're like, oh, how could you accuse me of blood libel? Because you're, you're alleging that the only reason the United States geopolitically supports Israel is because they harvest organs. Like, am I, am I insane, chat? Do, is there anyone else here who doesn't understand? I, I, I genuinely, I need a response from chat. Do you understand, yes or no? Okay, well, that, now I, I accidentally reframed the question. Now you're all saying no. Okay, I'm very clear. You get it. Honestly, the most anti-Semitic thing here is that somebody got to ban them before me. Yeah. Yes, yes, you understand. Okay, cool. Like, I, I don't know. I, I I just uh, if your if your sarcasm doesn't land, just take the L. If your sarcasm invokes thousand year old racial tropes, just take the L and do better next time. You don't have to double down. Or triple down on that, guys. That's not a that's not a corner that you're backed into. <sighs> yeah, if you don't actually have if you weren't actually serious, you don't have to double triple down and then come back ten minutes later to post an article that doesn't back up what you were saying. Especially after I already acknowledged that there's evidence that Israel did that in the past. And I'm fully open to them being investigated for them doing it now. But I don't have evidence of that, and I'm not going to claim it. And I certainly don't think it is ex very high on the list of reasons why the United States geopolitically supports Israel. And then if you're going to double down on that fucking stupid point that you said was sarcastic, a sarcastic joke, a funny little racial jape, if you will, um, 
it's interesting that you then go on to say, well, uh, Israel has one of the largest skin banks in the world. So, so you, you, you just, you just did, you just do think that like they're, they're organ trafficking around the world. You, you just, you just believe the blood libel and your defense for that was then, uh, oh, well, <laughs> you see, I'm only saying Israel's doing it, not all Jewish people. And it's like, but you're, you're saying it with no evidence. What's you have to have evidence of it <sighs> oh but, but but when QAnon does it about adrenochrome adrenochrome isn't real it's, it's literally real it's, it's a literal real compound anyway folks this is why I have been repeatedly and vociferously telling you guys to be very careful about where you get your info from and what kind of talking points and what kind of rhetoric you are taking in. Because if you are not careful, you will start getting your talking points from fucking Nazis, from people like Jake Shields on Twitter, you know? Nazis. And they might post tweets that contain factual information sometimes. That's a trap to loop you in to their far right rhetoric. Yeah, Jackson Hinkle would be another good example of this. Unfortunately, a lot of weirdos think being careful means supporting Israel. Yeah, no, it, it just means. You criticize the state of Israel, but you do so effectively. I don't want you to just shit in your pants and say, well, that's in opposition of Israel. That, that's not, no, you just shat your pants. <sighs> Sorry. I, and the irony of interrupting a segment that is explicitly anti- Israel colonialism in order to have that, to, in order to become main character of the stream. I don't think, I, I, I don't think you care. I, you know, I, I don't think you care. I think you care more about your hatred than you care about effective activism. And uh, I care about effective activism. Am I the only one who thinks using the term Zio feels anti-Semitic? Just, just say Zionist. What, what the fuck? Stop. <laughs> I, we don't, we don't need weird like slang terms. Just use the term. Yeah, like I, I don't know. I literally showed an example of from today of a thirteen-year-old Palestinian girl being murdered on the we in the West Bank. We don't, we don't need to, like, we don't need to be looking for worse things. We already have those things in front of us. And on top of that, hey, let's investigate further, but there can't be an investigation until there's a ceasefire, unfortunately, because Israel's being a colonial bitch about it. Oh, Zio was coined by David fucking Duke. Well, they, yeah, there, there we go. That would be why it sounds anti-Semitic. There we go. So you banned me because you think I'm shitty at advocacy? I banned you because I think you're shitty at advocacy and because you're derailing the stream and because you're being a little bitch about it and because, well, frankly... You interrupted a segment that is advocating for the thing you are claiming to be here for, anti-Israel colonialism, in order to 
talk about blood libel. That that yeah, that would be why you got banned. And you know, I want to note that I didn't ban you until you came back to double down and say, actually, yeah, the blood libel is kind of real, but you know, it's real just on a on a uh, for Israel. Israel specifically is doing the blood libel. If, well, if you didn't dogpile me as a racist, I, I would have just said, okay, it was a shit thing to say. Well, uh, I have news for you. If you are doubling down on being a racist because people are saying, hey, you're being kind of racist here, that doesn't, uh, that doesn't, you, you don't, you don't somehow escape the accusations. <laughs> You know, like, like, oh, you guys think I'm racist? Well, would a racist say, insert slur? Like, my, my goodness. Wow, you really showed us by being more racist. Congrats. Uh, Calame, I remember a video that started with valid critiques of APAC and jumped straight into anti-Semitic conspiracies, got weirdly praised last November. The pushback was slow. Yeah, and I have an extraordinarily low tolerance for that here. Okay? I do not want a community where that shit is allowed a single goddamn inch. Okay? If you want that, go hang out with Jimmy Dore's community. Go hang out with Jackson Hinkle's community. Okay? Where the rest of the trash of the internet live. Like, I, I don't know what to tell you on that one. You really showed us by being even more anti-Semitic. Thanks. Anyway. And that book lives in the land of Israel. You know, if you want to authenticate the stories, the events, the archaeology, you, you go there and you get to recharge. You, you, you let one Nazi on your riverboat and all of a sudden you have a Nazi riverboat. It's true. Your batteries and it matters. It matters to a lot of people and it should matter because, again, that is the wellspring of the values that made America a great country. We'll get to more on this topic in a moment. First, did you know there's nearly one trillion dollars of infrastructure and pandemic funds yet to be spent? That is correct. Are, I'm OK. Normally I would skip an ad, but I, I need to see this because Ben Shapiro I'm pretty sure has been extremely anti uh, COVID <laughs> payments. And is Ben still going, going to shill for PPP loan fraud? I, I think so. There's a massive stockpile of cash. The lame duck administration is going to push hard to spend in their last few months to artificially inflate the economy. If dude, dude, Okay, invest in gold now because the administration is putting a lot of money <laughs> into the economy. Biden is able to push those funds out. We could see another inflation surge just like during COVID. I'm <laughs> look, 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 you need to invest in gold because Biden might put money into the economy. I'm sure you remember the terrible effects high prices have on most Americans. There is hope a surge in prices can be beaten. A gold IRA from Birch Gold Group is the ultimate inflation hedge for your savings in uncertain times. To see how to protect your IRA or for You know, like, a surge in prices would also affect, like, more, more, more elastic goods. You, you know, like... Like you, you could just like invest in like a, a solid stock portfolio and then the money entering the economy would make your investment go up in value. Then you just, then you just sell what it, it goes up in value and you'd make a lot of money actually, Ben. Like you, if you're, if you're just investing in the gold, yeah, it'll be stable, but like, it's not, you're not going to be able to make money off of it until the val the val God. Oh my God. Oh my God. My brain is breaking. 401k. Get your free info kit on gold by texting the word Ben to 989898. 
There's more good news. Due to enormous demand, Birch Gold is offering the 24 karat gold plated truth bomb for one more month on qualifying purchase. There's something so dystopian about this image on this segment. I, I just. Ben, ben is literally selling a gold plated bomb on a segment about about eradicating Palestinians in the name of like a co colonial acquisition are you are you it's too on the nose man oh my god fuck purchases but you need to text Ben to 989898 to claim your eligibility before September 30th. Don't wait for the president's spending spree to tank the dollar again. Protect your financial future with gold. Text Ben to 989898. Claim your eligibility. Make your purchase before September 30th. Again, don't wait for another spending spree to create inflation. Instead, text Ben to 989898. Claim your eligibility. Make your purchase before September 30th. So Ambassador Freeman, your book, One Jewish State, the last- I just, I, I, I that was, that was wild, dude. Conservatives are getting better at advertising, but in the worst possible ways. As best hope to resolve the Israeli-Palestinian conflict posits something that has become taboo, which is the claim that the best solution in the, in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict is Israeli sovereignty, not only in what is now termed inside the Green Line Israel, but also in Judea and Samaria, known as the West. Well, yeah, Super Jet Guy, like his viewers are like, probably like between 60 and 80 years old. That's probably like his core base. And you know, they, they love gold. All right. Like, like old people love gold investments. I, I don't know why, but it does seem like that seems to be like older people are just like view it as like a good thing to have for like financial stability. <laughs> Why are we getting a bunch of people in Twitch chat a asking me sexual questions? The answer, of course, is yes, I would. For a price. Bank, what, what's the case for that? Because the, the case that's always been made is that a two-state solution is the best. There has to be a self-governing Palestinian state in which Palestinians govern Palestinians and Israelis govern Israelis. The case that you make is the opposite. You essentially say that's never going to happen. So, so why exactly it, should Israel govern areas like, say, Nablus or Janin that are entirely Palestinian but are obviously honeycombed with terrorism as well? Uh, obviously. Honeycombed with terrorism. Yeah, really, really, Ben... Uh... Obviously, the only thing to do is to just uh, eradicate all of them. Right? Like, that that's Ben's ultimate solution here. So, look, we, we start off with uh, with the point you made. The two-state solution, uh, we now de demonstrably know it won't work because we have uh, attempted to establish that in Gaza. Uh, about you, you absolutely didn't. Netanyahu funded, uh, through Qatar, funded Hamas. For decades, you, you, you like this. It, they're what you undermined all of the effective parties in Gaza. Like this is just dishonest as hell. About uh, 17 years ago, and uh, they were given lots of money. There's not a single Jew living there, not a single uh, boot of any American soldier there. They were given billions of dollars. Uh, the territory is beautiful. Western face. Yeah, they, they were given billions of dollars. Hamas was given billions of dollars, huh? By Netanyahu. That's crazy. Facing Mediterranean. And they took all the money, all the billions of dollars. They elected Hamas and they created one of the most uh, vile terror states uh, ever known to man. Okay, that's the two state solution. That would be replicated as well in Judea and Samaria if there were a Palestinian state. By the way, uh, whenever you hear Judea and Samaria, what is what that is referring to are the occupied uh, is the occupied West Bank. Um, when people are calling it Judea and Samaria, they are talking about it as a territory of Israel. They are even in places like Area A, which is a, a component under Oslo of Judea and Samaria, which is entirely Arab. Those places have now become hotbeds of terrorism, as you say, in Janine and Ramallah and the Israeli. Uh... Oh, yeah, it's. 
Uh, there are just so many terrorists over there. We have to invade. There's no other choice. Defense forces have to go there to keep the peace. So making the case that a two-state solution has failed and will continue to fail is, is, is pretty easy. It's pretty straightforward. You'd have to be blind not to- Oh, uh, Amber Brains, you're thinking of greater Israel because that does include Syria and Jordan. But when- the, in the current dialogue, Judea and Samaria are referring to uh, the occupied West Bank. To know that. Now the question is, what do you do? So the question is, is there anybody that can rule over Judea and Samaria that has a track record of empowering an Arab minority? Well, you know, you don't have to look far for that, right? It's the state of Israel. Twenty. Dude. Oh my God. His argument, his argument is, is literally, well, uh, you know, other countries could come in and, uh, and, you know, rule over <laughs> the occupied territories. Uh, but, you know, Israel really has the best and fairest track record towards Palestinians. Are you kidding, dude? Ah, man, I really, really want to see the rest of... I, I want to see... What is his plan? ...percent of the state of Israel are Arab citizens. More than 20% of Haifa University, Beersheba University, uh, Hebrew University, Tel Aviv University are Arabs. The, the Arabs have... Uh, have uh, assimilated and penetrated into Israeli society in a very positive way. I have dear friends who are at the pinnacle of, of business and science uh, in, uh, in the state of Israel. You, you, you break your leg and you go to Hadassah Hospital, you're probably gonna get an Arab orthopedic surgeon who'll do a very good job in, 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 in treating you. So, you know, Israel is the only country that can export into this very kind of dangerous, unstable area, um, the, kind of, the kind of governance and values that will enable the, the locals, the Palestinians, to have a standard of living that rises up to that of Israeli Arabs. That's, that's number one. Number two is for those. Yeah, uh, Israeli Arabs that um, live in a uh, apartheid system where they aren't allowed to buy uh, houses in predominantly Jewish neighborhood, neighborhoods because it would change the uh, Jewish character of the neighborhoods. Interesting. Who, who care about, um, about biblical Israel and those who care about places like, you know, Shiloh and Hebron and Bethlehem and, and the old city of Jerusalem. Um, if, if Israel doesn't maintain sovereignty over those places, they're, they're gone. I mean, the Palestinians, given the opportunity, as they have done, for example, with the grave of Joseph in Nablus, they will destroy any connection. This is their goal, to destroy any connection of the Jewish people, of the Christian faith to this holy land. I mean, this is land. This is there, there are there. Prior to the uh, Israeli invasion of Gaza. That. There were Palestinian Christians there and had been for like hundreds if not thousand years like dude <laughs> you're just lying this is where jesus walked this is where the kings ruled the prophets preached these are not places that could be given away i mean i uh, and, and i believe that that is even the secular israelis even the you know the the far left in israel who kind of never wanted to get too close to the Bible, never get too close to their ancient history, wanted to recreate Israel in their own image. Even they are recognizing right now that this land is really the DNA of the Jewish people and essential to people who... I just... Fun, fun fact, guys. All right. Where, where do you guys think uh, Bethlehem is? Where do, you, where do you, where do you think that is? Just out of, out of curiosity. Oh, bingo! 
It's in the West Bank. Look, look at that. It's in the West Bank in the occupied territories. And, um... Well, m most of the people there are Palestinians. And uh, here, here was what they were up to last, uh, last Christmas. Rubble was added to nat nativity scenes, and the traditional festive mood Palestinian Christians have during this time turned somber as they mourn the more than 20,000 Palestinians who have been killed in Gaza since the war began. This Christmas is like no other Christmas in my lifetime, said Varsin Aghaba uh, Aghabekian, uh, who is part of the Armenian Christian community in the Palestinian city of Ramallah. This year, it's a very sad time for all of us. Like, the destruction of Christian sites in Palestinian areas has been done by the IDF. Not by Hamas and not by uh, the Palestinians. Who observe the Christian faith, and, and we can't give it away. And if we can't give it away, we need to come up with a system to keep it uh, under Israeli sovereignty. And of course, my final point is that there'll be no security, uh, uh, no security in the region until Israel is able to rule over this land. Israel can rule over the land, they can keep the peace. And that's the best thing for Jordan, it's the best thing for the uh, for the Saudis, the Emiratis, it's the best thing for the- Oh, very nippy duck, I'm pretty sure that was, and uh, they got clapped. Palestinians who live in Judea and Samaria. So when people say to me, oh, you know. Well, yeah, he's saying, obviously, Israel would rule over them because <laughs> clearly they can't participate in a democracy. See, this is what I was very curious about. Does he believe in the enfranchisement, the equal rights of Palestinians under Israeli law? And the answer is, uh, I obviously, no. He's just advocating for South African apartheid, but even more explicit than it is now in Israel. You're a colonizer, you're, a, you're an apartheidist. No, no, this is a plan. You can like it whether you're on the left or, for, or you're on the right, whether can you're you? secular, whether you're religious. It's the best outcome for everyone. It's actually the unfair. The, the best outcome for everyone is Palestinians not being enfranchised because they're too violent to vote is quite an insane take. Finished business that Donald Trump and I and, and Jared and others were working on when we, when we left office. I mean, this is the unfinished business, trying to find a solution that works for all. And it was, if people keep an open mind, this is a far better solution to the two-state solution, which is a failure. So we, to, to be clear, we haven't even tried a two-state solution here. Ambassador Friedman, obviously the big objection to anything like this is how does voting work? So the, the claim Oh my god, Ben actually asked the question. Let's go. Let's dive into it. Good job, Ben. I my low expectations were in a rare instance slightly too low. Claim is it, let's say Israel takes sovereignty, annexes the, the Judea and Samaria regions of, of what what people call the West Bank. Let's say that they do that. Obviously, you have millions of Palestinians who are living there. They're not voting now, obviously. They haven't voted in an election since like 2004. So Mahmoud Abbas is now in year 18 of a four-year term. And obviously, right. voting is not taking place in the Gaza Strip. But the supposition is that now living in democratic Israel, they should be granted a vote in the Israeli parliament. If that were to happen, then almost immediately you would have a vying for control over the actual democratic auspices of the state of Israel. So how do you square that circle? How do you make it so that Israel can maintain all this control over this area? Without how, how do you make it a non-democratic uh, solution? Without falling into the trap of either a, a radicalized Arab minority taking control of the entire state or the quote unquote apartheid. Yeah, no, no. His problem, his problem is the enfranchisement of the Palestinian people. I, I understand that's why he asked, but I'm actually interested to see what the answer is. Because I want, I, 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 am, I am curious largely because conservatives tend 
to um, want to champion aspects of democracy and are not really interested in saying, yes, we want, uh, we, we don't believe these people should be allowed to vote because, you know, they're naturally inferior or some, some reason like that. They don't want to be that explicit, usually. So I'm interested in, in the answer. Hide state accusation that essentially oh god oh guys no 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 oh no i wasn't saying i wasn't saying ben was being good for asking about enfranchisement i was just surprised we were getting a follow-up question about it at all obviously the reason he's asking is hey trump ambassador to israel how can we you know do this so that Israel can maintain the veneer of being a democracy without actually allowing these savages to vote. There's a second class citizenship being provided for Arab citizens. So look, um, you know, uh, Israel, Israel, if it took over Judea and Samaria, it will inherit a large, uh, somewhat radicalized at this point, Arab population, and it will work with its partners to try to de-radicalize that by creating opportunities for, uh, for for the Palestinians there. But Israel can't, you know, swap, if you will, a, uh, a a security threat for a demographic threat. They can't. It just can't be done. I mean, Israel is a Jewish state. Interesting. A, a security threat for a demographic threat. Like, do you, do you guys understand how explicitly racist that is? The, the demographic is just brown people. We can't, we can't have a browning of Israel now, can we? Apparently, according to Ben Shapiro's guest here. And that's why the book is called One Jewish State, because we're only asking for one Jewish state. You know, there's 40 plus. Oh, we're, we're, we're just asking for one Jewish state. What's, what's that in the grand scheme of things? I mean, you have you have like a hundred other uh, Arab states. We just want one Jewish state. Can you grant us one, one ethno state? Muslim countries in the world, right? Where you got to be Muslim. There's 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 Christian countries. There's Hindu countries. There's Buddhist countries. We're just saying kind of one Jewish state, which means that the national character of the of the state of Israel, the collective right of self-determination, which is part of the Israeli nation state law, has to be Jewish. Within that, okay, within that, you know, within that, you know, umbrella, you'll have governance that, you know. In it is wild to me. The, the, the amount of, I, Boxbat, I understand it's not technically true in this case, but I'm drawing, uh, I, I was making a reference to Ann Coulter and her talk of demographic threats. I, I was trying, I was trying to make a parallel here. I wasn't, I understand people in the Middle East tend to be a bit darker complexion. I, I, I get, I get, I get it. I just, I'm just trying, I'm, I was doing a thing. But OK, um, the issue here is that, like, it, it's so it's so interesting to me. He's like, well, you know, you, you've got you've got countries where you have to be a Christian. You've got countries where you have to be a Muslim. You've got countries where where you have to be a Hindu. And you know what? My like any irrational response to that would be. Those are bad. That's bad, though. You understand that that's bad, right? Like, that's why secular governance is preferable. Because then you can have people of all kinds of different re uh, religious beliefs and idea. Like, like that's, that's the good thing. It's good to have that. It's, it's bad to have a theocracy, man. I, it, it, it's not, it's, this isn't rocket science. You should be free to believe and worship however you want. 
Now, I use the example, for example, of, of Puerto Rico in the United States. Puerto Rico is a, a wholly owned territory of the United States. Its people are, are citizens. And, of and you know what? It should either be a state or be independent. We we are America should not have territories. <laughs> that that designation shouldn't exist. They should either be independent or like a state. Full stop. Of the United States, they don't vote. Puerto Rico does not vote in a national election. Neither does Guam. Neither and they should. They should be enfranchised. That's bad. That is American. Fun fact, Guam, I think Guam and American Samoa have some of the highest rates of like uh, military service in the entire country. Like, yeah, they, they deserve to be enfranchised. Samoa or other places. No one accuses America of being an apartheid state. Are you sure about that? Are, are you familiar with American history? Are you, are, you, are you sure about that? My guy, you look old as dirt. You know that's not true. Yeah, we should enfranch the areas we control so that they have a say in their governance. So we'll have to work on the governance. I mean, I think the Palestinians living in their communities should have civilian autonomy. Over he he li He's literally arguing that... Um, that that the West Bank should just become a territory of Israel that, you know, has no self-determinative rights. Incredible stuff. Well, you know, they'll, they'll elect their mayors, they'll elect their governors, they'll, they'll it, it, possibly, you know, if we're getting into serious discussions, we can talk about taxation and how they'll have representation in taxation. You know, possibly, you know, we can we can go in different directions. I, I, I'm sorry. I, <laughs> I'm so angry I tuned out what he said. Other places. No one accuses America of being an apartheid state. So we'll have to work on the governance. I mean, I think the Palestinians living in their communities should have civilian autonomy. You know, they'll, they'll elect their mayors, they'll elect their governors, they'll, they'll it, it, possibly, you know, if we're getting into serious discussions, we can talk about taxation and how they'll have representation in taxation. I, I love how he wrote an entire book about a one state solution and his his level of discourse on this is just, yeah, you know, at some, at some point we'll talk about, uh, taxation with representation, uh, may, maybe, you know, if we're getting serious about it and it's like, you wrote a book on it, guy. Are they going to have representation or not? Like, how are you, how are you as an American, like sitting there being like, yeah, I believe, I believe that in this instance, uh, Taxation without representation is good, actually. You're, you're, you're fucking American, man. That's like the, that's like no, thing number one. <laughs> that, that was like the Revolutionary War, man. I'm losing it, bro. Station, you know, possibly, you know, we can, we can go in different route, the route and just say, look, there, there are seven or eight principles of Israel that you need 90 percent of the population to vote in favor of. And, you know, which is another way of, of maintaining the Jewish character of the state of Israel. There's ways to do it. To me, that's a. There, there are seven or eight principles of Israel that you need 90 percent of the population to vote in favor of. And, you know, which is another way of. of what does that even mean? You have 70, you have seven or eight principles that you need. 90% of Israel to vote for? What does that mean, dude? D am, am I missing something? Do you guys get what he's talking about? Like, like th is this literally like a convert or die type of mentality? Like, hey, you have to, you have to sign loyalty pledges or, or we'll kick you out of the country? He's saying that uh, could upset the hegemony would require a super, super majority of votes. So it's a dictatorship. I mean, effectively for the people in, in the occupied territories, yeah.
maintaining the Jewish character of the state of Israel. There's ways to do it. To me, that's a detail. To let that detail get in the way of de-radicalizing the, uh, the, the West Bank. Uh, of, of Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, uh, his main concern here is like clamping down the occupied territories fully and completely occupying them, exerting total control uh, over those territories. And, uh, you know, pesky little things like rights can be sorted out later. Of giving away the biblical heritage of the Jewish and the Christian people and to creating another terror state that will, you know, simply do to Israel uh, in spades and, you know, 10 times what Gaza did. Uh, it's, 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 a, it's, it's a problem. You know, th th when he's saying that, right, do you think he realizes that 10 times what Hamas did on October 7th would still be only like one fifth of what, what Israel has done to Gaza? Like, that, does he think? about that at all and it's also very interesting that you know these people who are all about their careful language you know you know he, he's very careful when he says demographic threat but uh suddenly it becomes very very vague and overgeneralized when it comes to what gaza did to israel when he's talking about october 7th Interesting, interesting, because Hamas did that, not the children, predominantly children, living in Gaza. Problem we're going to be able to fix. I have no doubt it's fixable if people take this seriously. Well, the book is One Jewish State, The Last Best Hope to Resolve the Israeli-Palestinian Conflict. The author is Ambassador David. Really, no follow-up questions whatsoever. You have a guest on. And he says, ah, oh, you know, we just won't let them vote. And you're like, ah, excellent. Nice talking with you. Uh, really? No follow-up. Friedman, of course, he was ambassador to Israel under Donald Trump. David, thanks so much for the time. Really appreciate it. It's my pleasure, Ben. Thanks for having me. Are you tired of the lies and the twists of the mainstream media talking? Uh, I'm tired of your lies and twists. No, she's going to prosecute the president of the... <laughs> anyway, thanks, Ben. Uh, you, you lived up to my extraordinarily low expectations. <sighs> and with that, we have ended a, a very frustrating two-hour stream. I'm not done streaming. I, we just end, we ended the segment. We got through it. We did it, chat. It only took us like an hour and a half to make it through a 15 fucking minute segment.